Hello and welcome to Mr Tompkins EdTech. Your teacher is going to be using a OneNote class notebook with you this year, which is like a digital exercise book where your teacher can share their notes and resources with you and where you can complete your assignments. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can find and open your OneNote class notebook for the first time. I'll explain the basic structure of the class notebook and what the different sections are for, and then I'll show you how you can complete your own work in a OneNote page. This video is part of a series of videos aimed at students learning to use Teams as their virtual online classroom. I'm going to assume in this video that you already know your way around Teams, so if that's not the case, it's probably better that you watch some of these other videos first. I'll put a series link up here for you. So first up, where do you find your class notebook for the first time? Well, if you're using a laptop or PC and go to your class group in Teams, you'll see that it says class notebook up here on one of the tabs at the top. If I tap on it, it's going to show me my class notebook embedded within Teams. Now this is fine if you just want a quick look, but if your teacher is going to be setting you a lot of work via OneNote this year, it would be much better if you install the OneNote app from the Microsoft Store. Click on the white Microsoft tote bag in the start menu and search and install OneNote for Windows 10. Now there is also another version of OneNote that comes with Microsoft Office, but it's not as good as this one and I highly recommend that you use OneNote for Windows 10 instead. Once you have that installed, if you come back to Class Notebooks in Teams, you can press this button up here that says Open in App. It's sometimes hidden at the end here and your class notebook will be pushed to the OneNote app and you can open it up in there instead. On a mobile device like an iPad or on a phone, you'll want to install the OneNote app from the App Store or Play Store. Then if I go to Class Groups in Teams, you'll see there isn't really room for all the headings across the top. So the link to the class notebook is listed here under More. Tap that and the class notebook will be pushed straight to the OneNote app. Now once you've pushed the class notebook to the OneNote app, either on desktop or mobile, then it's going to stay open and the next time you want to view it, you can simply open your OneNote app and it will be there waiting for you. Okay, so now you know how to open it, let's take a look inside and I'll explain what each section is for. Now the three main sections to your notebook are the collaboration space, the content library, and most importantly, the section with your name written on it. Each of these sections has different rules about who can see it and who can make changes. The collaboration space is a shared area where you, your teacher and all the other students in the class can see it and edit the pages. So this area is meant for group work. Now the teacher can lock this area so you might not be able to use it straight away, but maybe the teacher will set an assignment at some point later in the term. The content library contains all the teacher's notes and resources. It's read only for the students so you can take a look but you can't change anything. That means it's a great place to look for a clean copy of any resources the teacher has shared with you. Lastly, the section with your name on it is for your notes and assignments. You can create new pages in here or you can edit, delete or write over any pages that the teacher has distributed to you. Often for an assignment, the teacher will distribute a copy of the worksheet that they want you to complete to your own section here and you will need to write your answers on that sheet. Now, note that your teacher can see everything in here, so it's not private to you. But that means your teacher can mark your work and give you feedback without you need to actually send them the files via email or whatever. So actually, it works out pretty handy for everyone. Okay, let's try creating a new page. You can do this in your own section, you know, the one with your name on it. Tap Add Page and you'll get a new blank page appear there for you. Now, notice that the folder structure on the left is actually eating up about a third of my screen here but tapping on this icon here collapses and expands this. So you can pull it out when you want to navigate around your notebook and close it up when you're actually working on a page. The home ribbon in OneNote is very similar to Word and it gives you a bunch of useful tools to help you type and format your text. Unlike Word though, you can tap and start typing pretty much anywhere you like on the page. You'll see that it creates these little text envelopes which you can then move around and resize. Top left, just above the date up here, is a space for adding a heading. Whatever you call it in here, it's going to appear like that in your navigation. As well as text, on the draw ribbon you have a load of inking tools too, and a great selection of pens, pencils and highlighters, and my personal favourite, Rainbow Pen. 
Now, if you have a stylus or an Apple Pencil for your iPad, then it's going to be a fantastic tool for writing on, and it makes a nice change from typing everything in. If you don't have a stylus, then you can try zooming in and using your finger to write or draw, which is not quite so accurate, but might do a reasonable enough job depending on the task. As well as typing and inking, the insert ribbon gives you lots of other things you can place in your OneNote page. If you worked on paper, you can easily take a photo of your work and then use these handy crop tools to stretch out the parallax effect that you normally get. You can also record audio and place that on the page, which might be really useful for learning languages or for reading out your stories. Now, as well as making your own pages, your teacher can distribute pages for you to work on in here. The other thing you can do is you can copy a page from the teacher's content library to your own area. Just find the page you want, right click or long press on the page name in the navigation menu, and then copy the page. Go back to your own area, and again, right click or long press, and then you can paste it in. Once it's in here, you can then annotate the page any way you like. Add in your own notes, thoughts, ideas, or whatever you want to the document. I have to say that the search feature in OneNote is truly amazing. Type in any word and OneNote will find every occurrence of it, either typed, written in digital ink, or even appearing somewhere in a photo embedded in the page. If English is your second language, you can use the translate feature in the view ribbon to instantly change an entire page into your home language. You've also got Immersive Reader built into OneNote, which is going to help you read the pages much more easily and even get it to read it aloud for you. So altogether, OneNote is a really versatile place to do your online work. And over time, it's going to fill up with your class notes and assignments and should become a really valuable digital notebook when it comes time to revise for your tests. So that's the end of this series and I wish you every success in your new digital classroom. If you've missed any of the videos in this series, you can check out this playlist for all the others. If you're preparing for GCC Maths this year, you might like to check out my exam past paper walkthroughs by following this link below. See you on the next video.